Hey everyone, this is Akash. I have secured all India rank 52 in Gate CS 2022. As you might know, my friend Tata Gaka already uploaded video on TOC. And in this video, I'm gonna discuss the solution of discrete mathematics. Okay. So the objective of the video is to discuss the how to solve and how to approach tricky question in exam. And also, I'll try to give you in-depth solution. Okay. So without wasting any time, let's see the first question. Okay. So let's read the first question. It says which of the following statements is or are true for a group G. Okay, we have given you a group and bunch of statements. We have to identify which one is true and which one is false. Okay, let's uh, read option A. If for all x y, okay, let me just write down this here. For all x y, x y whole square is x square y square. For all x y belongs to G, then you need to show. Then you need to show G is commutative. Okay. So please understand what is our goal. Our goal is to show x y equal to y x for all x y. Okay. So now see what is the definition of x y whole square? This is nothing but x y times x y. This is equal to x square times y square. Then I want y x or x y, right? So what I can do is I can multiply x inverse from the left hand side. As you know, group is associative, so I can plug these two. So this will be x squared x times y x y. Okay. Equals to x inverse times x x y square. And what is x inverse x? Recall x inverse x is nothing but identity, right? That's the definition of x inverse. So identity times y x y equals to e times x y square. Identity times anything has to be that element, right? That's the definition of identity. Element. So y x y equals to x y square. I think we got the point how to approach now. Let's just multiply y inverse from the right hand side. So it will be y square y inverse. Now clearly you can see this will be y x equals to x y because y inverse y square is uh, y itself. So done. Option A is correct. Okay. Option A is correct. Now let's read option B. If for all x belongs to g, x square equal to 1, then g is commutative. Here 1 is the identity element. Okay. 1 is the identity element. They have used a different notation. You can use any notation, but let's just use 1 as they have given, right? So let's see option B. They have given you x square equal to 1 for all x belongs to g. Can I say x equal to x inverse? Yes. Why? Because just multiply x inverse from any side, so you will get x, x square times x inverse equal to x inverse, and x square times x inverse is just x, right? Okay, then what we need to show? We need to show xy equals to yx for all xy. Now let's start with xy. Can I say xy equals to x inverse y inverse? Yes, I can say that because x equal to x inverse and y equal to y inverse. Can I write yx whole inverse? Yes, again I can write. Because there is, uh, you know, famous theorem or reversal law. Okay, it says a b whole inverse is nothing but b inverse a. So you might have learned this uh, kind of uh, special case of it in matrix, inverse of matrix, right? So y x whole inverse. And understand y x is nothing but another element of group because group is closed. For our convenience, let's say y y x equals to a, some a. Then x y equal to a inverse. Okay, x y equal to a inverse. Now a is also element of g, and I know x equal to x inverse. This is true for all x belongs to g, right? Now a is also element. Can I say equal to a inverse? Yes. That means a inverse equals to a. And what is a? Nothing but y x. Done. Right. So this option is also correct. Now let's read option C. If order of g is true, then g is commutative. This is obviously true. This is obviously true. We might have learned one theorem. It says if you have any order or uh, if you have any group of order less than equal to five, then it is commutative. Obviously, this statement is true. Let's read option D. If G is commutative, then subgroup of G need not be commutative. This is obviously false because if G is commutative, then H has to be commutative. If H is a subgroup, then it has to be commutative because the operation and the elements you are taking from G only, right? That's why this option is false. Uh, one thing, uh, suppose uh, if you don't know that theorem, then what you can do is you can easily prove this thing. Proving this thing is not that hard. Let me show you how to approach this question. Okay, 
So option C. G is uh, order of G is two. That means can I write G equals to a comma i, where e is identity and a is other than identity. Okay. Then what do you have to show? I have to show a times e equals to e times a. Are they equal? Yes, it is equal to a. That's the definition of this is the definition of the identity element. Right? Identity element. So obviously this is a commutative group. Done. This is a straightforward question. Okay. Let's move to the next question. This is a very simple question. This is a very simple question. So it says consider a simple undirected graph of 10 vertices. If the graph is disconnected, okay, these are disconnected graph, then the maximum number of edges it can have. Okay. So let's first understand the generalized case, then we'll just substitute the value of n. Okay. Say n is number of vertices. Okay. Then the strategy is take n minus 1 vertices here. And make a complete graph. Make a complete graph. Okay. Then how many edges it will have? It's n minus one choose two. Simple, right? Then take the inner vertex a b. Say b. Then clearly one can say there is no path from b to any one of the vertex, so it is disconnected. So suppose there is a vertex one. So one can easily say there is no path from one to uh, b to one. Okay. So no path. Clearly this is disconnected. And uh, it has maximum number of edges. So here they have given you n equals to 10. If you substitute, you will get, uh, you'll get 9 choose 2, which is 9 factorial times 7 uh, divided by 7 factorial times 2 factorial. So nothing but 36. Okay. So 36 is the answer. This is a very simple question. Very simple question. You just have to uh, identify the strategy here, right? This is the strategy. Okay. Let's move to the next question. Oh, this is a very good question. This is a very, very good question. So, let's read. Let's see. The number of arrangements of six identical balls. Okay, they have given you six identical balls. In three identical beams. Okay, three identical beams. Let me tell you one thing. That we have three identical beams and six identical balls. Let's use this formula. N plus K minus 1. Choose K minus 1. Okay, where k is the number of beams, and n is the number of balls. But this is for, uh, this is wrong. You cannot use this formula. Why? Because this formula is applicable only when beams are distinguishable. But here they have given you identical beams. This formula is valid only when beams are distinguishable. Okay. So you cannot use this formula. Then how to approach this question? Just try to understand. The number of arrangement of six identical balls. They have given you six identical balls, and you have to arrange all those balls in three beams. So the problem uh, here you just have to break six in three parts. Okay. Break six in three parts. For example, one such arrangement could be zero, zero, six, and zero, one, five. Then you can write 0, 2, 4. Then you can write 0, 3, 3. Okay. Now you cannot write 0, 4, 2. Why? Because this case and this this case, these two are identical. Why? Because to identify this case, what you have to say? You'll say that okay, one bean has zero ball, another bean has two balls, another bean has four balls. Okay. To identify this case, we have to say the same thing. You cannot say first bean has zero ball and second bean has uh, four balls. You cannot say that because you cannot distinguish the beans. That's why these two cases are exactly same. Okay. So this is the main idea of this problem. Once you get it, you can easily solve it, right? Now I think now it is very easy for you to come up with this solution. Now other could be one, 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 four, then one, two, three. Then two, two. If you observe, you cannot have any other cases. These are the seven possibilities: one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Seven cases. You cannot write three, 
3 is 0 because you, are, you have already have taken that case here. So this is the answer. Of course, you might have to you, uh, spend some extra time to convince yourself that, okay, these are the 7 cases, we cannot have any other case. So that's why it can take some time, but the problem is uh, not that hard, but tricky. Of course, this is a tricky problem, very good problem. So the answer to this question is 7. Okay. Now let's move to the next question. This is actually a very good question. This question is a mind-blowing question. Why let me tell you. Even after getting the answer, you have to work, uh, you have to um, spend some time to identify the option. That's why this is actually lengthy and tricky. This question is actually lengthy and tricky, both. Okay. So, and to solve this problem, you have to be a little smarter. I'll tell you why. So first read this question. So which one of the following is the closed form for the generating function of the sequence a n and defined below? n, a n is defined in this way. n is on uh, odd, then a n is n plus 1. Otherwise, 1. What does it mean? What is the meaning of otherwise? n is even. Because you can have two cases. Right. Either odd or even. Okay. So let's write, write down the information. a n is nothing but n plus 1 when n is odd and 1 when n is even. Okay. So say let ax be the generating function. ax be the generating function. Then by definition ax is nothing but summation n is from 0 to infinity a n x power n. Right? Let's open it. a0 a1x plus a2x square plus a3x u plus so on and so forth. Right? What is a0? Because 0 is even, so it has to be 1. What is a1? It is 2. Why? Because 1 is odd, so the answer has to be n plus 1. Here n is 1, so it is it has to be 2, right? So it is x square because a2 is 1, then it is 4x cubed, and so on so forth. If you observe carefully, then you will see that here we have 1, x square, and each time will be x power 4, x power 6. You can plug this event runs. Then you will get something interesting formula, right? After clubbing this thing, you will see one thing. Uh, let me just write this down. You can take 2x common, so 1 plus 2x square plus 3x power 4 and so on so forth. Okay. This sum is very easy, this series is very straightforward, you might have learned in your high school, so it is nothing but 1 by 1 minus x square plus 2x, this quantity. This is not that obvious, but uh, if you observe carefully, you can easily get the answer. Let me teach you one formula first. You know 1 by 1 minus r is nothing but summation r to the power n where n is from 0 to infinity. Of course, abs absolute value of r must be less than 1. Right? Then, what you can do is, you can just differentiate. So it will be 1 by 1 minus r whole square equals to summation n r to the power n minus 1 where n is from 0 to infinity. If you open it, you will see this is nothing but 1 plus 2r plus 3r square plus 4r cube and so on. Now observe one thing. This series and this series looks very similar if you observe carefully. But here we have x square and there we have uh, there we had uh, only r, right? But think about it. Can I do something? Yes. I can say put x square to be some z. Then it is nothing but one plus two z plus for our convenience, right? You can easily solve it even in some z square. 4z cube and so on and so forth. Now you can easily sum it up because I have already written the formula. This is nothing but 1 by 1 minus z whole square, 1 by 1 minus x square whole square because z is x square. Now this is nothing but 1 by 1 minus x square plus 2x by 1 minus x square whole square. Okay. Now let's simplify this one minus. If you observe this option, this answer is not given directly in the option. Okay, so let's simplify this. So this will be one plus two x minus x square. Okay. So if you observe this option is not given in uh, this answer is not given in the option. So as I have already told you, we have to work with you. So let's see. you have to spend some time to identify the option. Right. Now if you observe one thing, they have given you this thing in every option and this numer uh, this denominator, right? In every possible option. You just have to identify the numerator. Okay. So one thing that you can do is I don't know the numerator, since the numerator is dot dot by one minus x square whole square. 
plus 1 by 1 minus x. Now let's simplify. Let's try to get that answer. So it will be 1 minus x square whole square dot dot plus 1 plus x by 1 minus x square. Okay. Why I have multiplied with 1 plus x just to make the math simple. Okay. This is a very easy algebra. So this will be 1 minus x square whole square dot dot plus 1 plus x into 1 minus x square. So this is nothing but 1 minus x square whole square dot dot plus 1 plus x minus x square minus x cube. If you observe in the original answer, I don't have any uh, x cube, right? And I have extra x. So this dot dot uh, must contain x cube so that they will cancel these two things, uh, these two terms. It must have x so that to add x plus x, you will get x, right? You know, this dot dot thing is nothing but x cube plus x. So if you observe, this is nothing but option A, right? Observe carefully. Also, of course, they have taken x common, so it will be 1 plus x square. It's nothing but x plus x cube. Right? This is a very really good question. To solve this question, you have to, I mean, you have to be a little smarter. You have to, you should know how to uh, eliminate options. That is one thing that helps in complete exam, right? So, okay, this is a, this is a very good question. Hope to see you in the next one, guys. Thank you.